<laughs> okay, let me start off by saying, first of all, you know, uh, it's been an incredible ride. Uh, I've had 25 glorious, glorious years of a friendship that has been incredible. Most people their whole life don't even know what a friend is or what kind of friends can be. And I've been so blessed from the day that he walked into Marietta, Florida, into a Shelby restaurant and applied for a job. The day he cracked the first smile at me in his little crazy old stupid cowboy boots that he had on and his pinstripe suit. And I said, wow. He looked at him and said, you, I'm interviewing you. I, I've got a white shirt on and a pair of black slacks and you got to wear a suit? You got to be kidding me. And I remember that. I remember us looking at each other and said, you know, Doc, I need a job. He used to always call me Doc. He said, Doc, I, I got to have a job. I said, okay, well, let's see what we can do. Let's see what we can make this happen. And lo and behold, uh, this is what happened. There's, there's a few things I'd like to share with you. There's two things, uh, most, two important things. I'm not going to go big and crazy on, the, on, on Richard right now until next Friday and things that I got done. But there's a couple things I do want to share with you guys. First and foremost, I want to share two things, incredible things that, that I, I want to thank uh, Richard for bringing to my life. There's two things Richard has brought to my life that's very, very important to me in my life. It's always been important to me. And uh, we just had that kind of that little talk. I promised him that I wasn't going to try and I knew say anything for him. Uh, he said I probably wouldn't because I'd probably be laughing the whole while I was doing it, but that's beside the point. But I, in, deep in my heart, you know, I do I do miss my friend. I, you talk about a person that I've talked to almost on a daily basis for a long, long time. It's very, very difficult. I want to say two things. Richard brought something to my life that's very, very important to me. He brought two important things to my life. First, he brought Christ into my life. He taught me what Jesus Christ was really all about, how to find God in my life, and how God can be the most important thing in my life. It's a very, very important thing for everyone. And everybody he met, everywhere he did in the last seven, eight years, he was like, hey, do you know Christ? Hey, do you know Christ? And I, I remember the first day I sat in, in the meeting when, when they told him that he, he had cancer, and we were sitting there and we were talking to uh, Dr. Vanderbilt, and Dr. Vanderbilt, she, I could see she had tears in her eyes before she was going to say what she had to say. And for some ungodly reason, I could feel that she was going to say something that was gonna be really bad, just by the expression on her face when she was looking at me. And I'll never forget Richard looking up at her and saying to her, he said, hey, do you know God in your life? And the whole, Thing changed. He said, do you know you could go to heaven? I remember him telling her that. And she said, well, not, I'm not for sure sure. And that, I remember that conversation because I was sitting there in that conversation. I was privy to it. And then she said, well, Richard, I have some bad news to tell you. Richard said, I already know. And it was interesting because we sat down there and then she finally told me. And then me being human, <laughs> being who I am, I was in shock. And here, here was that. He was cracking a smile. And it was interesting because uh, the whole while I was sitting there, I couldn't just crack a smile like he cracked a smile. And I used to, typical me, if, if, if you know me, and the people who know me, all of you know me, know who I am. I remember turning to him and saying, I told you that the Philippines was going to get you. I kept telling him that. I got I told you that the Philippines was going to get you. I said, if you just would have stayed in the United States, and those part of you, we could have got this treatment done, and this would have happened. And he looked at me and he goes, but look at the work and the good stuff I've done. So, you know what? Kudos to him, I'm proud of him. He did and it's what he did. And the second thing that Richard brought in my life that was very, very important. When we was in Marietta, Florida, and we was at, and, I, and I hired Richard, after we were in it, Richard and I formed a little school together. A lot of people don't know. We formed a little class together that helped mentally and handicapped and underprivileged kids. We were in Troy, Alabama and in, in Marietta, Florida. And I got a lot of grip on that. And really, that was Richard's idea. It wasn't mine, so everybody knows. But I ended up being the one who had to be the preacher because he about it and talk about it because he said, you're the one who got the gift of gab, and I'm the one who could just lead people. And we, we kind of did this together and kind of enjoyed it. Through that, I was the privilege and the honor of having an individual named Leslie Adams in my life. Leslie was brought into my life by Richard Hatchwell. Richard said to me, he said, don't let Leslie be afforded to stay. I said, make sure that we get it. And his mom was dying of cancer. And it's ironic that Richard died of cancer. And he said, don't let Leslie be afforded to stay. 
take it, make that commitment. Well, I made that commitment. And that commitment has stuck with me for all 24, 25 years that I've been, that I've been at, I've had Leslie. Since then, I became guardian at light, I've adopted Leslie when he was six years old and more. And my, because of Leslie today, you know, a lot of things I do in my life that I always say to him. And I don't know if I agree with this as far as family, friends, and things that have happened, and things that have, the, the joy, that, uh, the things that have brought to uh, a lot of people's lives. Richard has brought a lot of joy to a lot of people's lives. And a lot of, a lot of people that, that know him, it just, it's a funny thing. People will know him, that knew him and had the privilege of knowing him. Mike had the privilege of meeting him. He had the privilege of meeting him. You know, and, and it was very easy to become his friend. A friend to Richard was very, very, very important. And when he became your friend, he really became your friend. But he didn't just become my friend. He became my best friend. And he became the friend that most people dream about having. But I had that. And I had those glorious privilege to do that. But we're going to start off. You know, friends starts with dad. And he was a father. And he, was, he, he, he had fellowship. Uh, everywhere he went, everything he did, he believed in fellowship. Fellowship was more important to Richard than a lot of things. But he was a wonderful father. Every Thing he did in his life revolved around all his kids. From the time that we was in the restaurant business, we bring all the kids to the restaurant. And it's interesting how first I want to say this to the kids, but all my heart I say this because of my friend, because of God's father. And you guys know, the kids know, how can I stand with your dad? You got to do that. So let me just say this. First of all, I want to thank all of y'all for spending the last years and the last days and the last months with your father, breaking everything you've done, Moving away, coming down, and spending with your father shows you love. But just in return, I will tell you, your father had that much love for all of you. For every one of you, your grandkids, your kids, everybody, his whole life was. And look what he did. He left his family, went to the Philippines to do it. We didn't all agree. Even I sit back today, we were talking about the day and joking. Oh my God, Chad, and Melissa, and Rick. Uh, in the last four or five months, he decided he wanted to go back to the Philippines. And we were all say, oh, no, this ain't going to happen. We're not letting you do that. So the first trip that he gets to go, they got a monsoon or a typhoon or a flood or something. And he can't make it. He's stranded in California. So what do I do? Fly him back to Louisiana. I, I told him, I started joking. I said, I'll leave your butt in California. <laughs> I, I brought him back. And then I said, well, maybe this is a lesson. Maybe you'll learn him on the back. But he did. He ended up going back. And you know what's funny? He was persistent, as we know. He was true to his word to the Philippines. And he loved the people there. But I know that your grandfather had a lot to do with this. I promise you. Rick, you know. I don't have to say any more. You know. I think... Rick, you were more welcome to know the love that I've had for your father through all the years, the love that he had brought for his family, his sisters, his brothers, and, and everybody that was involved in his life. Today, just like Brother Mike said, your dad wouldn't want us to be sad. He wouldn't want us to be upset. He wouldn't want us to be uh, nervous. First thing your dad would say to all of us, if there's anybody in this church who knows that you can go to heaven, you better stop today and find these two men in the back. Because for 17 years, I'm going to share this with you guys two men in the back. For 17 years, I told my friend that I, the reason why I was friends with him, which it was fun, it was entertaining, that I would ride his coattails to heaven. I have told him that, oh my God, I can't tell you how many times. And my very last visit to, visit to Evergreen, we were sitting there, and he told me that it was an honor him being my friend. And he told me that he loved me very much. And he said to me, look, you can't ride my coattail to heaven. You got to find your way there. And I said, don't worry about it, brother, I got it. I got this. He said, I'm serious. He goes, I'm worried about you. I, said, he, I told that man, I said, he said, do me proud. I said, I will do you proud. And as I stand in front of you today, I am proud to call 
Richard Mashburn. And I'm going to say how he used to say Montgomery Mashburn. <laughs> I said, my friend, I said, in my lifetime, I hope to God all of you find a friend like what I have. Because those are far and few to find. Now, I'm going to leave this at this thought. My best friend was one of, I had two best friends in my life, two great, great, wonderful friends. I lost my best friend, Richard Newman, in on Thanksgiving, in November of Thanksgiving, the week of Thanksgiving. His name was Mark, and I utilized him, utilized him in his, in his, in his sermon, in his uh, funeral. And Richard told me this in, in the thing. He says, boy, I know that's gotta be hard to stand up. And, Talk about your best friend. Well, I never dreamed that I'd be standing today talking about my best friend. Best friends are hard to make. I said, best friends don't never argue with us. I can't say that about uh, Richard and I, because we can all get close all the time. But we still love each other. They didn't agree. We definitely didn't agree on a lot of things. But we definitely had a lot of fun. And we've been through a lot of things together. Do what your dad wanted you to do. Make him proud. Make him proud. Do the right thing. And God forbid, if you didn't, none of you guys didn't find God in your life, you better find him quick. Because he's going to be haunting you all along. <laughs> so y'all know I'm telling y'all the truth. <laughs> so, to all you guys, thank you so, so much. I know that. Me sitting in front of here is not so much I can do or say this. I can tell you stories about Richard that, wow, can be incredible stories to tell you. But I'm going to leave it with this thought that I used to, like I tell a lot of people. In the last weeks, in the last months of Richard's life, we talked immensely. Richard knew that my wife had passed away a, a year ago, and he knew that we gave away orphans. And he became passionate like I became passionate about finding life and what life was. And my daughter made a speech to give life. And today, and the, the, some of the words she said, I'm gonna use in a quote from my daughter. She says, death of a loved one is only going to be alive and happy. But life is a wonderful thing that keeps on giving, keeps on living. So become an organ donor. I always end with my, always become an organ donor and give, leave that life legacy to somebody else. I see that one thing that you do, I see on the on, He'll wear your, your, your brace and he wore his all the way to the very end. And to even when I was looking at pictures from the Philippines, it says, life is a wonderful thing. The legacy you leave for others is a great thing. And, I, and I'm gonna leave this at the end. It was with my last sharing with your dad and, and, and your brother. He, we talked about the world and what the world was all about and about discrimination. And we talked about how this world went with becoming a organ donor, and God don't care in discrimination. If the heart fits, it will fit, and whoever it has to fit, the lungs or the kidneys or whatever. So I've been blessed with four recipients, my daughter and I, that says, and, and it's been an incredible run, and me and your dad and your brother would sit down and talk about that constantly. And he was privileged to be able to meet some of them, and he would tell me how great a gift that was. And so that's the gift that I hang on to in my hand. And so I, I, it's hard for me to be sad because I see life from a different aspect with your dad. Your dad told me when, he was, when, when the day was announced, your dad said to me that don't worry, I'm going in a good place. And that's what he meant. And he, was never, he never feared, so why should we? I love everybody here, all the family. You know, I got your backs. You know, he would never allow me to do that. So, to your sisters, to your brothers, to your friends, to my friends, Sandy, been there, my daughter, who love, Richard loved very much. I got tons and tons of pictures. The day she was born, he was, the day she was born, he drove all the way from Florida to, to Texas to come see my daughter. How, how incredible, that, that's a friend. That's what I'm talking about. My daughter, I, I got pictures on the day he was he helped her. Isn't that something? I love everybody. To our man above, find Christ. <laughs> That's him. Amen. Amen.